Hello, well, everybody. Oh, you're doing it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Let's Talk. <laughs> I will one day pronounce this correctly. Let's Talk Top Tech meeting. Uh, today is 18 of August 2022. And we have one topic in the agenda for the moment, which is the ODH CNBI feature. Um, feel free to add yourselves as attendees. Thanks. Um, okay. Um, CNBI, who wants to start it? Yes, um, I, I put it on the agenda um, as a recurring item so that we can talk about it. Um, uh, maybe just to Zync. Um, I said uh, a few things about uh, current current mood from upstream management on, on the scrums. So um, that's uh, still uh, very true. Um, even though that uh, at the moment we are not really having any CNBI working group meetings, uh, we're gonna continue with um, our, uh, or delivering our key result. Um, so uh, let's let's not uh, leave that out of focus. Um, I, I talked with a few of you, so let's let's sync. Um, so with uh, Pep, um, I tried to look at the overall workflow. So what could it look like? Uh, what shall it look like? Um, so that we have a pretty clear idea of um, the single steps. What 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 is happening in these uh, single steps? Um, but at the same time also have an artifact we could take and um, talk about what we are doing with the Open Data Hub Roads folks. Um, it felt pretty handy that Vince had that uh, mock-up for the UI. So uh, understand this as the mock-up for the process. Um, let's see if we can document that in a good way and collaborate on that one. The basic idea is um, let's have a dependency graph. Um, in the end, we want to deliver a container notebook that could be used in the Jupyter Notebook Spawner or in the Cube uh, Flow Notebook Controller. So the question would be what, what is required to deliver that? And that, that is our dependency graph. Um, it feels like we need to experiment with the, uh, with the layout um should it be something like like a sequence diagram or a flow chart is it is it a pipeline drawing that we're gonna do or is it just boxes with arrows um let's let's see what that means um other than that um i i talked with gage sent him in vince direction so um let's revisit what we can do what we how we can uh, connect the uh, UI mock-up that Vince uh, provided uh, with what we are really doing. Um, I think that is uh, meaningful because in the end, uh, it turned out that uh, nobody really liked that good idea of let's create a GitHub issue so that bots kick in and build some stuff. It felt like an intermediate step. Yes, that uh, was the plan, but um, the general feedback was, yeah, well, it's work we need to do, but in the end, we need to connect it to a new UI. Why don't we go ahead and do the real thing um, and not have that intermediate step of a bot that is reacting to GitHub issues? Both is uh, valid. Let's let's uh, focus or let's move towards the UI. That seems to be the work result that we need to deliver. So let's focus on that one. Um, what else? Ah, um, I, I had a short look at all the Meteor stuff. I, I don't know if you, any of you did that, how you feel about that. It feels to me like, yeah, we can use that Meteor. Uh, it might be very handy. Um, it is basically kicking off a pipeline, a set of pipelines. So if we're gonna deliver um, a set of pipeline names, Meteor controller 
um, will go ahead and take the input from the um, custom resource definition and send it through these pipelines. There's a component called, um, I think, Shower, and um, the other one is Coma. I don't know if we, we need them. So that needs a little bit um, analysis, but uh, to me, it feels like, yeah, it's exactly what we should do, have that Meteor op uh, CRD and operator extended or have a very analog thing um, so that we can deliver our first use case. So the goal would be um, if we're going to have a look at the, um, if we're going to have a look at the dependency graph, we know what we need to do. If we get some input from the UI, it should create a custom resource definition, Meteor or Meteor++ or whatever we call it. And the Meteor controller should go ahead, kick off the pipelines. The pi Tecton pipeline is going to do the real work. And the last step of that pipeline, I think it's one pipeline, uh, will be putting that uh, container image that we created into the image stream ob object of Open Data Hub having all the annotations that are required for Jupyter Notebook Spawner present and finish. Sounds like a good plan. Uh, I don't know if I left out something. Uh, feel free to add, have questions or whatever, comments. Good. Maybe. Uh... Uh, in addition to this, which is the city environment that I've been looking at, uh, correct. The the idea is to deploy all this, all those pieces there eventually. And right now, there is um, a custom version of the ODH dashboard um, that is built from the Bring Your Own Notebook branch. Um, it is deployed there, and this also includes the pipeline, the import pipeline that was implemented for Bring Your Own Notebook. The pipeline works, but the dashboard doesn't at the moment. And as far as I could see, there is no Meteor deployment. So I guess that would be another thing to deploy. And the rest of the pipelines that we also want to basically ACOECI, I guess we should deploying it there as well or should we use the AICOECI well yeah I, I, I think so Asha, do what uh, do, do you have any feeling uh, about that is is meteor building on its own I think so they they forked basically forked CI uh, AICOECI right yeah, only a few pipelines are in place. Like in the ACVC, there are multiple pipelines. We don't need them all. Uh, mm -hmm. So Meteor has this subset. I think the the subset is what we are also looking for. We should stick with uh, just the subset. Mm -hmm. OK. And uh, Pep, uh, the um, the CD pipelines, how or the, the CD for that feature branch, um, how does it work? Uh, we have a app repository on Operate First that is deploying that stuff, or was it manually curated onto the cluster? Do you know I that? Still don't know. I still don't know how. I didn't get to see. I don't know, Harshad, if you know it. I was planning to ask Tom, who is on PDO uh, at the moment, but I, the missing part for me is how does the image, the custom image, get built from the... I mean, I know there's a development branch in the dashboard repo called Beyond, and there is the image that is built from it, but I couldn't spot any automation that builds the image on push requests or... So Maybe. are you asking about the image of ODH dashboard? Yeah, the one. The ODH dashboard is built manually. The ODH team builds it. OK. OK. So they, they at whatever point in time, they took the uh, Beyond branch and, and, and built it and pushed it to the cluster. 
uh, it's not pushed. Uh, so uh, the image is stated in ODH. Uh, so it is stated in a deployment. Is that's what they do? They they need right. to query, but they just uh, built it for demo purposes. So whenever someone asked to build it, so someone went and built that branch and pushed it to query and replaced that tag in that deployment. Ah. Right. Okay. Yeah, I mean the deployment of the image is managed by Argo at the moment. It's just that you know, building a new image is a missing piece. And okay, I guess it was done manually. I saw also in the ODH uh, Slack that apparently they recently implemented um, CI to use OpenShift CI to build an, an image on each PR. So I don't know if we can hook into that somehow. Uh, so how is this related to the CNBI work? Is something which I'm missing. Why are we looking into ODH dashboard build? Well, not not short term, but that eventually we want to integrate this into the dashboard, right? So one one of the requirements of uh, of the CNBI functionality mm -hmm. is that they, I mean, those are the mockups that bins created that Christoph mentioned are mockups for the you know, updating the dash the ODH dashboard to add the use cases. Uh, um, so right now in Beyond, you were just pointing it to an existing image, custom image that you want to import. Now the new use cases is about building a custom image, let's say from a Git repo. That's what we want to say. And and there would be or there should be. Uh, space somewhere in the ODH dashboard that allows you to point ODH to a repo and it gets an image gets spilled, right? So I feel it's the other way around. Uh, I don't think we need to integrate ODH into our ODH dashboard into our tooling. Our tooling should be getting integrated to ODH dashboard, right? Like the pipelines which we will work on, they will later on get added to the ODH dashboard, ODH dashboard will try to trigger it. If we are looking at how they are going to build it, then our focus would be all on talking to them and understanding why they build it in that way, uh, figuring this out. By the way, the OpenShift CI, they have it for a long time. They're just starting to build it now, uh, which I'm not sure like where, how, like where we should get into that uh, because it's it will still build their stuff. It will not build any of our pipeline um i think that is correct so when we gonna add all the ui features and and all that blah 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 and ultimately have whatever react component creating the custom resource definition the meteor custom resource definition that is where the odh dashboard work ends but somebody needs to put all that Meteor CRD controllers, uh, the pipelines, and all that blah 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 into the cluster. So either we're going to put it into ODH dashboard itself, or we're going to have a second component which is providing the backend logic for all that stuff. So Meteor CRD plus all the pipeline files. Or um, wait, if I talk about pipeline files. Is it that the Tecton files are included in the Meteor operator? No, they were separated. And the, the idea was to use the Helm charts yes. to deploy them. Um, the one that is currently in, in the cluster seems to have been deployed this manually. Like it's a single manifest. So, mm. well, um, That is what you're saying, uh, right, Hashard? Um, the ODH dashboard and however it gets built and deployed is not really of our business. But in my thinking, that Meteor operator plus, 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 all the stuff, 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 deploying that, if we could have the same method to deploy that, that, that would be good for us. Because I was assuming that we have a pretty pretty well done pipeline for the ODH dash dashboard. So uh, I, I'm missing a lot of bits, uh, I think. Maybe I'm getting confused here. So this is where the UI is, right? Uh, this will have uh, this will have that block. Uh, 
Okay. We'll have some some kind of form that is yeah. when submitted, blah blah blah, something happens, and that one will create a meteor CRD. Uh, sorry, a meteor yeah. so custom this, resource. This has the form. Someone fills it, and it will basically uh, trigger or call the meteor CRD or whatever it is, right? The CRD. So this is the only. Uh, this is the. This is from the from the ODH part, right? Once this is done, it will it will come here, and now either the pipette needs to trigger and work on these bits and complete those bits, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so as of now, what they do is they they move it to a branch, so like beyond. And someone manually build it. Uh -huh. And then this thing, there is an up arrow to here, and it, it goes, it reaches here. But the, is that something that we do on the operate first hosted ODH deployments? Yes, yes. everyone does that. So, okay. uh, ODH manifest is the is like dot application. It's the one short space where all, all the manifests live. So this is what is later deployed. So there would be a branch in there as well. And that's the branch which all the users will use to, to give it to their operator. In the KFDF, they will just move, modify that to beyond. And all the things will deploy whatever is defined there, right? Okay. So if we are starting today and we are just going for CNBI, so if I understand correctly, we are understanding this manual build so that if we want to make some changes, uh, it can deploy, it would, it can get built and deployed and we can do the testing. Is that correct? Is that why we are looking into it? Yes, I so think we, that's what we should be able to do in the end. Yes, correct. So if that's the case, we just got to know at the beginning of the meeting, you said we are separating out because we don't have too many meetings with ODH. So we will work on our bits and then sync with them, right? Mm -hmm. So if the UI is not in our hands, that's my point. Like if we, if we are not having the UI in our point, we just know what the requirement is. Then we don't even have to look at the ODH dashboard for the time being, right? We can just c continue to work on the Meteor CRDs and stuff. That's what I was trying to like communicate. Got it. Um, how do we deploy test and development versions of the CNBI, CRD, and operator? So, Just... uh, so they have in ODH manifest, they have uh, different directories. Uh, and if I understand what uh, Landon was talking on, on our previous call, there is one block called OpenShift Pipelines, which deploys OpenShift Pipelines into users side uh, this is probably not there in rhods right i i think we can assume that correct me if i'm wrong but the, the way i understood is that openshift pipelines is just there and we can assume i mean i i think it shouldn't be managed by odh it would just use it yeah, sorry to uh, create the confusion. Let's not just talk about this. I I just wanted to show that there are directories, like different directories. That's what I wanted to point out. So let's stick with Jupyter Hub. Uh, so Jupyter Hub is there. And now there should be, what I feel is they would ask us to create another new component, which would be called CNBI, or this complete blob of CNBI plus beyond, and keep it one one part where the pipelines and task are living along with the CRDs and things like that. That's what I would assume because that's how they were using Ray and stuff like that. Because uh, we just have to, I don't know how much we have to go into this, but there is a new component for notebook controller, right? Which these two are the same, but yes. at some point of time, they will uh, they will get moved. They, they will prefer one or, on another. Okay, that makes sense to me. So, um, how do we do that? So, I was uh, what I was suggesting is 
irrespective of where we are going to end. If we work on these bits, at the end we can always put them here in the new yes. new directory. So so deployment. If you want to get that automatic deployment, I would say let's build this, uh, have this image, and then we can point it to any of the ODH manifest as we want, or we can create a new directory there because there is a fork of operate first, which deploys support. Correct. So, um, do good in the in the end. Is, uh, it is uh, pretty simple, I guess, to deploy in CNBI operator to the OS climate cluster, right? Because either we're going to do it manually on a command line, or we integrate it into an existing Argo CD application, or we integrate it into uh, the fork. Uh, of the ODH manifest. So yeah. that is what we have as control. Then let's stray for that. Um, let's focus on the CNBI controller. Let's keep, or uh, yeah, the operator. Let's keep uh, Vince and friends a little bit busy and in the loop because if they're going to start with the UI stuff and we can give them a clear interface in the form of the custom resource definition, they can basically move on and don't block us later on. Um, I understood that you think the ODH dashboard uh, CI CD stuff is not really required. And I understood that with the fork of the ODH manifest repository that we are using on operate first to deploy the OS climate cluster, sorry, to deploy the OS climate ODH, we basically have what we want, the component that could deploy test versions of the CNBI operator. I think I'm correct. I could repeat that if you need some time to think about it. So we're going to create and publish the CNBI operator. That is something that we could do manually while testing or developing that will live on Quay somewhere out there. So sorry, just to confirm, when you say CNBI operator, that's basically a Meteor renamed or? Yes, exactly. Question. Um, he actually rename like i don't care i mean in the end it's a marketing thing and an, an barrier thing right if we need to explain to each and every o open data hub person what meteor is i would actually go ahead and fork that thing rename it and and uh, make it the cnbi operator just for easier integration into their uh, world of thoughts so if you're going to have that operator, we can easily integrate it into the automated deployment of the ODH manifest fork that we're going to use for as climate. That, that is something that uh, exists, Sarshard, in Argo CD, or where, where does it exist? Can you repeat the question? Yes. Uh, what exists? We, we got the, uh, the CNBI operator on Quay published as a container image, right? And then we're going to take the fork of the ODH manifest repository that we have in operate first to deploy the OS climate cluster. And in that fork, we're going to add that new directory for the CNBI operator. And uh, Argo CD of operate first will deploy that auto magically. Yeah, it's already in place. Yes, exactly. OK. Uh, by the way, uh, like all this was based on what uh, knowledge I have, but all this was to clear what what the uh, difference was in the idea, like what Pep was talking about. So I don't want to like step on to like what Pep was discussing. So like like uh, that's what I wanted to just clear out. Yes, yes. I, I think uh, at least I have been looking at the wrong object, right? Because I thought that the ODH dashboard CI or CD will do all the trick. Uh, but I think uh, I, I, I need to look at the ODH manifests CD because uh, that is really delivering the, the additional feature. So the, uh, 
there there two two half parts of it right like one is the de development side and then one one is the actual product side this is the structure of the development side like when we develop mm -hmm. how operate first will deploy to osc and how we'll test things out mm -hmm. technically once everything gets into odh manifest that's how our roads will deploy it roads de relies on the odh manifest that's the tar file which they use and deploy it so technically if everything ends up in odh manifest that's when if we can say it's in production or it's in product if mm -hmm. it doesn't get to odh manifest then technically it's it's in it's somewhere but it's not there in our attitude is mm -hmm. okay so okay. does that answer all the questions pep or if if i'm if something is missing do let me know how i can probably yeah yeah um yeah. i just wanted to uh, uh to mention that the reason i was trying to make and I understand we shouldn't get into that territory like driving it ourselves. But the, the reason I wanted the dashboard to work there is because, I mean, in in what in this workflow that you just described, I think we go on one side and ODH goes on their own side. The ODH dashboard changes, but I I feel that it would help if we can put things together and they can see it. And for example, it it actually already kind of started with bins saying okay let's let's iterate over the the existing import pipeline and that's what i i wanted to just try that this pipeline worked with the current odh and it doesn't <laughs> um i mean i understand we shouldn't invest a lot of time on on fixing the dashboard itself ourselves i was just wondering if if it could work i think it would make things easier to, to work together with the odh development if that makes sense uh so precisely on that point uh that's how beyond work right uh beyond team worked on the pipelines i'm uh, sorry the operate open uh, the osg beyond team worked on the pipelines and the odh beyond team worked on the ui the the ui team kept on adding their content to odh dashboard and if uh, if you if you want i can share the yaml switch sorry the uh, beyond yamls the validation all were kept into jupyter hub and then both of these were added to our odh manifest and that's how it got deployed so we can still stay on that i'm just saying like uh building odh dashboard if we go into that uh, phase then then when are we working on our stuff that's that's what i'm asking yeah no no uh, make, makes perfect sense right um i i don't want to uh, work on the odh dashboard itself um that is what i tell uh, jay and Sherrod and friends all the time i'm super pretty sure that gauge or hashard or or pep could go into coding react typescript stuff and modify the ODH dashboard. But the learning curve will be something like flat line. That, that doesn't make sense from, from the resource uh, that we put in there. That is why I continue asking them, uh, please provide us uh, Vince as, as the UX uh, mastermind. And I think it's Dan who's coding all that stuff. And they have a person called, um, I think Andrew something with an B. Um, he's also coding all that stuff in React. So I think the resources are there. I just want us to make sure that we are in sync on the on the flows, therefore that dependency graph idea, and that we are in sync uh, with the interfaces. So if, if we are talking about the use case, uh, choose base image, add modules, we should be clear about the interface. The the CNBI operator should act on a custom resource uh, definition that is just containing this, a string for the base image and an array of strings for the modules, plus their specification versions and specifications, right? Um, I, I don't want us to change anything on the uh, ODH dashboard. I mean, if we could do it easily, yeah, go ahead, but not invest that learning effort that is for sure required does it does it make sense is it is it uh, understandable yes 
Good. Good. By the way, we are still on the top level, right? Like you're still surfacing him, like on the, like when we go deep, there are more problems which will hit. With validation, they were not these problems because we were just validating the image. Now we are building the image. So base image, what would be the base image? How are we building it? Where are we pushing it? All these are uh, a hurdle which we would have to cross to get to that point. So I would say like, like those, those are that that's why I'm pushing like that's why I'm stopping us to look into ODH dashboard because like technically if you if someone builds the UI and to say someone uh, like if they ask the ODH uh, admins to build it they can just do Podman build and it will build in in that 15 20 minutes mm -hmm. but if we go into that this step like we are wasting our hour into looking into that that's why I was saying all these bits yes because I feel like there is a lot of things which will actually spoil our nights because there are hardships in the pipelines, which I think we have seen with Meteor. So that's where I was heading towards. Yes, makes sense. So what is the next step out of that? Um, uh, Gage is going ahead with Vince and friends and talk about that, um, that UI part. Um, uh, what shall be the next step on the on the CNBI controller part, operator part? Uh, shall we really try to build one and modify the ODH manifests of operate first so that we get it into? Is is that present? Do we need to check if Meteor is deployed over there uh, correctly? Is it is it just a bunch of beyond Tecton pipelines uh, that are deployed and we need to make it broader? Or do we keep the beyond stuff and add the CNBI operator on top of it or independently? So my vote would be to first uh, lay out what we are removing and what we are adding. And on then, Meteor? Meteor. Mm -hmm. uh, because Meteor still is a standalone application. The UI is a different, it's not the ODH UI and things like mm -hmm. that. So I, that should be like my first st step. But if you say in terms of coding, I would say let's put a pipeline together where some some information comes in and we build something at the end and just see what the flow is like. And then we can uh, mm -hmm. break the pieces apart and start working on those things. That's that's my suggestion, Pep. I see. Actually, that pipeline should be already the the Meteor pipeline should do this, right? You point it to a Git repo, and it should be. I mean, assuming the again, we we will not be validating. I don't think Meteor validates the pipeline validates this, but anyway, it will build an image that in theory can be used uh, in Jupyter Hub, right? I think so. Uh, like, it, it, and simple answer, yes. Uh, like, if you want a long answer, I can say like where things will not work. But yeah, simply yes, it, it can. Okay, so let's next step is confirm. <laughs> like, deploy def, deploy the operate the meteor operator in in that cluster and try it without the UI. I mean, just creating a meteor resource and Yes, I, I, I mean it's a controller, so um, or an operator, so it should be easy to test, right? Just type make test, and it will test. So, um, did they did did they include all the Tecton pipeline YAML files into the Meteor operator? That is what what Tom did, right, Harshad? Uh, include them? No, no. Uh, I think the wording is something which will confuse us. Uh, in Meteor operator, there is the, so you know, the, you remember the pipeline and pipeline run. The instantiation of pipeline is in Meteor controller, uh, but the pipeline itself is a separate thing. So you can, like I can also go and up, run that pipeline. Yes. But the instantiation is happening from Meteor controller. Yes, makes sense. Um, how did the uh, pipeline de declarations get into the cluster? In theory, Helm, but um, <laughs> yes. in, in Smoke, 
actually it's it's actually helm but manually like helm install someone thought I, as far as i could see someone did helm install and mm -hmm. got the is there is it uh is it the architecture we want to keep so we have one artifact which is providing all the tasks all the all the all the pipelines all that stuff yaml then we have one artifact which is the meteor operator and then we have a third artifact which is the odh um dashboard so is that these uh, three components that you want to have i don't know if we want to i mean if it's just one pipeline definition maybe we can add it. I add it there in the manifests, or instead of adding one manifest that deploys a Helm chart with another manifest, <laughs> if you see what I mean. Um, I don't know, Harshad, what do you think? Maybe we can just add the pipelines. I mean, the bad part of it is we are duplicating the manifest because, in theory, the source should be elsewhere, right? No, like there's no hard opinion from my side. I feel OC apply will do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. My suggestion would be let's. Uh, we should have this uh, like how we are having discussion of the whole architectures. We should start having this discussion formally and have these things noted down, and then because. Uh, some of us, I don't know, like for me, I am like a more of a visual person. If I start seeing these bits, then I can say, yeah, this is it. And, and yeah. uh, like, like like that bulleted list you just created, is that a visual thing? I, I couldn't draw. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dark. <laughs> That's the reason I moved yes. the points. Yes, yes, yes. Um, of us are not familiar with these bits, right? That's why I wanted to share. Yes. And maybe me and Pep know about Manifest, what is that, and who is dashboard, but others are still new. Yes. Okay, let's do that. Um, let's let's uh, focus on keeping the UI, UX uh, people involved. Uh, and let's focus on the interface also known as the CNBI operator, which is the next iteration of uh, Meteor. Therefore, let's see what we need uh, in Meteor, what we need to add, what we need to remove. Maybe it's configurable in the end, uh, but let's let's review the Meteor operator. Um, let's have that uh, dependency graph so that we can talk everybody through the same flow because what we just did is basically talking through the flow of, of uh, uh, sorry, what we just did is uh, talking about the components and their dependencies. Um, so what we're gonna create and what needs what other component. Yes, does it make sense? Yes. Everybody feel free to add stuff, right? Um, Did I capture all the next steps? Um, so basically, the, the Harshad's request to, to visualize this uh, in an architecture diagram, the dependency graph diagram to discuss the uh, interface, let's say, and a more practical thing, which is deployment here on, on the cluster and, uh -huh. and have it running, correct? I think yes. so. Yeah. Um, could you feedback that uh, to the master issue that we have somewhere around? Um, yeah. I I kept on adding issues and creating issues and stuff um, so that that we have one uh, place to do that stuff. 
Okay. Good. Uh, last deep technical question. Hashard, it is a matter of the Meteor pipeline to create all the deployments required to show the Jupyter notebook in the end. That is something that we don't need, right? So, uh, so go to this base image, Christoph. Uh, it's called, uh, this is in, this is something which we built called S2I custom notebook. What it does, it's, it already has pieces from minimal notebook and things like that. So base architecture of Jupyter notebook is there. What it, what Meteor does is once user types in their URL, it takes that and now it builds with this base image. So all the Jupyter Hub contents are already there. Now it's just installing the file and copying the notebook or mm -hmm. like the repository repo into this container. So that's, that's like one, one step in attack on pipeline you just described, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's di divided into multiple ones because we are doing some metrics okay. and stuff. But yes, it's just one step. It's just building that container image. And now if you run it in Jupyter Hub, it will run because all the base things were already there in it because it's from a minimal notebook. Correct. But Meteor will also create create the deployment of the of the container image we just created, create a route and all that blah 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 and really start up that notebook image, right? Uh, yeah, so the image is uh, so uh, so it's it's the, it allows you to go and get to the Jupyter Hub console. Now you get there. So that's where it helps you. But will it get you inside the notebook? It's because yes, it can if you have logged in. That's the question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's doing that, isn't it? Yes, it does that. It, yes, it takes okay. you to the notebook. Like it takes you yes. to the deployment of that. It, it, it directly doesn't deploy it. It's the ODH control or Jupyter Hub running, which is already running on the on the on the cluster will start those spawning and stuff like that. So without Jupyter Hub, it will not work. So you have to run Jupyter Hub right. and Meteor together. Yes. Yes, and that especially that last part is something that we don't need because we're gonna stop at the point in time where we created uh, the image, put all the annotations and labels and blah 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 in it, and we can see the image as a selectable container notebook image, a uh, notebook uh, uh, image, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm a little bit happier. I I don't know if I have I have more information now. That's good. It's getting a little bit deeper and broader the the image I have in my mind. Uh, but that is uh, I guess natural. I have a question that might not make you happier <laughs> or maybe we can uh it can be for next week because how are you familiar with the uh Duplo notebook controller and i'm asking because i think there's also work in progress to uh, make it available in odh and i'm not familiar with it but i read that the requirements are different and basically it has less restrictions on images or different at least restrictions on the images it can work with so i'm asking if we should keep this in mind uh, maybe we are building images for um the jupiter spawner when we actually want to build them for the notebook controller or yeah I think that's uh, that's right. Um, sounds to me like uh, a it influences the build part because we might pick a different base image because that stuff for the Jupyter notebook spawner is not required anymore, and maybe the notebook controller requires new stuff. And b it influences uh, the validation of the Bjorn feature um, because. I think the validation is checking for very specific files that are only required for the Jupyter Notebook spawner. So, yes, um, let's keep them, keep an eye on it, but uh, ignore it for the time being, because I think that every OS climate cluster is still using the Jupyter Notebook spawner. 
นะครับคุณ thanks for all the deep insights and thoughts I'm I'm done with the uh, recurring CNBI feature slot. <laughs> That's a lot that took the whole meeting, actually. Yeah. Um, does anyone have any additional topic uh, or any additional comment to the, the the topic? No. Well. Um, then thanks uh oh max you are back is it you have a topic no no, no? okay <laughs> um great then i'm going to stop the recording thank you everyone if i find the three buttons i have to click to stop the recording i hit two three and four it's actually four so thank you everyone see you